This is Maury Green, and I just want to say a few more things about the black cloud. Um, I have to admit something. When when I was first studying the black cloud, uh, I I myself didn't believe that it was that it was actually something that could happen. I was just <laughs> I just thought, oh, okay, well this is a good job at Berkeley, and I'll just I'll take it. <laughs> it seems it it sounds you know preposterous, but my urge is to approach this issue as if it could be true for the very reason that if this were true it would be the biggest finding uh, just, i mean in in history the discovery of another being on our planet that that that, that can communicate with us but but i didn't know what i was getting into the black cloud is very real very real one thing that we lost track of while we've been working here at, at, at Manual Arts is, is just the fact that the Black Cloud it has really attempted to communicate with us, and it seems that some people don't really think that, that everything about the project has been told to you. And I'm here to say that, first of all, that's totally true. The Bid Lab has been hiding information about the Black Cloud. I'm certain of it. I can't seem to understand how they created the anomalies from analyzing the data. I've not been able to reproduce this in my laboratory using any of the sophisticated information processing techniques that I know how to use so well. And the, 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 the Bid Lab is claiming that the Black Cloud is sentient and playing us these strange audio files. Uh, is it possible that life can find a way in any situation? Can life find a way in, in an environment that that we humans have created on Earth, an environment where, where species have, have just been going extinct than the, the species that we're used to? Could there be a new kind of species that's born of a marriage between technology and toxic chemicals? Could this be the ultimate destiny of our planet? Perhaps humans actually evolved for the very purpose of developing chemicals like plastics and pulling petroleum out of the earth and, and raising the CO2 level and actually giving birth to the next form of life that will occupy this planet, the black cloud. Perhaps the black cloud could be spread through contact like some kind of virus. Did you ever see planet Earth where the fungus pops out of the ant's head after it takes over its mind? Maybe. Maybe the black cloud is kind of like that, a cloud of information, a, a, a kind of mental disease, but a contagious one that makes you believe. At first I didn't believe it, but then I was looking at the theories of the primordial soup and spontaneous generation of life, and it just seems to me mankind continues sticking new chemicals into his environment. I mean, we're sticking more CO2 than there's been for, you know, the entire recent history of our planet into the air but more than CO2, uh, the kind of nitrous oxides that interact with volatile organic compounds to form uh, um, ozone in the air above cities. I mean, it's, it's completely plausible that these could combine in new ways and form new complicated molecules that could somehow, it seems like life on Earth is a, a complexity engine of some sort. I think this on Earth just seem to tend towards life. With all these new chemicals that are in the air, it seems perfectly natural that they would develop into some kind of being, some kind of manifestation. I don't know if it's spiritual or technological, or, or, or whether it's just a completely natural process. Maybe life is universal, and maybe life can survive in, in, in environments that we would say are completely polluted, even worse. Perhaps the black cloud is trying to poison our environment to drive us away from the planet. That would make perfect sense. After all, who would say that humans could be the last intelligent, sentient life on the planet? There's, it's entirely possible that the very first aliens we meet will actually be new forms of life that evolve out of our own, out of our own waste. Um, it might not be super intelligent computers. It might be something far more mysterious. After all, scientists, well, we like to pretend that we understand everything, but truly, we don't. If we didn't, if we understood everything, there would be no point in being scientists. We're still trying to figure out exactly what, how this planet works and how life works. Really, we've made great advances, but we have almost no clue. My thought is that, have you ever heard of the Gaia hypothesis? Believers in the Gaia hypothesis believe that Earth itself 
the whole planet, the whole, you know, ecosphere forms one giant sentient mind that actually self-corrects and, and tries to um, make itself, you know, live longer, like the whole planet is alive. And so they say that the, the, the Gaia, the Greek spirit of, of the planet, of nature, is actually a, a, a true manifestation, and it represents the entire web of life, the entire ecology of the planet. Perhaps it has some sort of consciousness, but in a way, couldn't man's uh, couldn't man's pollution of the natural environment work in the same way? And couldn't there be a kind of negative anti Gaia that's coming out of our own? A, a terrible waste of the planet, terrible suffering and, 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 and killing that the human race is capable of. And w wouldn't it seem that this could be, you know, where that the great enemy arises? So my theory is that we need to learn more about exactly what this black cloud could be. If there's even a small chance that it's real, we, we have to learn about it. And so that's why I approach this with a skeptical but curious mind. Let me tell you a little bit about complexity. When we measure pollutants to see if they're toxic, when the government measures them, it measures one variable at a time and tests it on, on, on animals and sees whether they get sick. They don't test the giant conglomeration of the thousands and thousands of different unusual, strange, organic and toxic, non-organic chemicals that we've been introducing into the environment. This isn't a simple scientific test where you can control all the variables. This is a real life. This is what's actually happening in the world. And there's no scientific test that can exactly predict what could be going on. For example, in our drinking water, it's been proven that there are literally dozens of kinds of pharmaceuticals that um, that we drink every time we drink city tap water. For example, um, drugs that people take for depression, uh, birth control, human growth hormone, uh, antipsychotic drugs, these are all artificial neurochemicals. So does it really sound so unusual that there could be a, a kind of artificial brain that's developing in our environment when we're strewing these chemicals everywhere? And this is just one of many examples of how the situation is much more complex than mainstream climatologists will, will ever let on to. Um, and I think that we have a responsibility, uh, considering the situation is so dangerous, to, to, to try to understand exactly what the black cloud is. And if everyone could look in their neighborhood, we could form a citizen scientist network where we could collect all of this news. And outside of the mainstream scientific journals, and, you know, I, I don't oppose science, but I, I believe that the situation requires some, some kind of deeper understanding of the possibilities of, of, of this planet. So uh, I, I urge you to please write in and try to find those pufftrons so that we can isolate the black cloud here in LA before it escapes out into the world in general and it reproduces and takes over the planet. This is all very serious. I, 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 it, if you think that if you think that this is a joke, then you are where I was about a couple months ago. Yeah, that was, that was a lot easier back then. I'm just, oh, it's a monster cloud of pollution. But the more time I've been spending with this data, the more people I've been speaking to, the more I realize that this is not a joke. This is something very, very real. And uh, I, I urge you to, to keep your eyes open. This is Maury Green, saying goodnight, thanks, peace.